Okay, this is my cube simulator. Um, okay, so I made a cube simulator. Um, like that. Um, Along with my clock simulator, I was lazy and didn't implement um, the click and drag sort of to move feature. So all I had to, so you have to do like, so you have to press the corresponding keys. Like for example, R will turn the right face and U will turn the up face. <laughs> yes, I'll do that. There's also X, which will do an X rotation, Y, which will do a Y rotation, and Z, which will do a Z rotation. Wow, it looks so like real. As if I could just grab it from the screen. <laughs> yeah, uh, I only implemented a wall on the right hand side, so I had to, so yeah, something you still have to implement is a wall on all six sides. Because now there's only a nice little gradient background on one side. <laughs> but now you can already like scramble it and solve it. Like, okay, if I hit the scramble button. And how does it scramble? What can it just applies 40 random moves, so yeah. <laughs> um, Can you try solving it? Okay. So yesterday I solved it and it took like half an hour because I can't use like because I I can't use like any finger tricks which I'm used to doing when solving a 3x3. Three three. So well just maybe start. So I can't so <laughs> I need to like think to see like what key I have to press to turn the right side. Not the right side. The right side. <laughs> Okay, yeah. Oh, by the way, if you use shift, then it will go the other direction. So R, R prime, R, R prime. Just spamming R U L. You're pressing R U, R U L? Yeah, but that, that only scrambles sort of this part of the cube because, because then like this piece is not scrambled because it's not in the right up or left layer. So I'm gonna need to, what if I use all six letters? Now it's scrambled. What if I also use shift? Here we go. It's scrambled now. Or I could just use the scramble button to scramble it. Spam it. Somehow it 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 trips my brain when all the colors just change as if there were lights inside a cube instead of by turning the you know like you don't yeah, see the I should have movement. like an I should have an animation. I, I that that's something that I should have because otherwise it doesn't really make much intuitive sense, um, and that's why it's more difficult to solve it this way. Um, no, the reason why it's more difficult to solve it this way is because I have to press the right key. And you already have like muscle memory. In your yeah, fingers. I have like finger tricks and yeah, and I can't use those here. I can't. That's the whole. Th that's that's the entire problem with cube simulators in general. That you can that you either have to use the mouse or buttons or key presses, and you can't use any like real finger tricks or anything like that. I mean, there are smart cubes, but that ruins the whole point of these in anyway. <laughs> um, but can you at least like do a cross or something? I mean, I can try. Wait, I'm gonna... Oh, wait, no. <laughs> I'm scramble. I'm gonna do a double X to... Move the cross to the bottom. Oh, wait. One of the cross pieces is already solved. Well, okay, great. Um, well... At least I can do something like... R prime, which will move that piece there. There you go, cross. Okay. 
And I can use Y to rotate around the cube because that's how cube notation works. Uh, so it seems like here I can just do so I can just do R prime to solve that orange piece. And here I can do U prime to move that piece over there, and then I can just do F twice to move it there across. That took way longer than on a normal cube. Because <laughs> normally it takes you a little over a minute to solve the whole cube, and it not, was like half an hour. Not, nor, not, over a minute, a little over a minute was my PB, not my, um, uh, average, so yeah, that's... Yeah, but you're not using, like, a real speed cube, so that's also impeding. Also, no, I am using a real speed cube, but I've used it a lot. It's not lubed, and also, I don't have it anymore. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Little incident that happened. I spilled my drink all over, all over it. So yeah. So you're waiting for the delivery. Yeah, because like we've been waiting for weeks uh, for the speed cubes that we ordered, and yeah. And so you just happening. decided to make one <laughs> out of thin air. I just decided to make one. The, oh, by the way, you can move it. <laughs> um, I just decided to make one that I can't bear with. So, yeah. <laughs> but I if you control... I mean, you could control it with a real cube, that, but that ruins the whole point of this, because then you have a real cube. <laughs> I mean, there are smart cubes, which have other purposes, like, for example little online competitions, but yeah, that's, but not, but that basically ruins the point of a cube simulator like this. <laughs> uh, okay, so you might notice in the code that there's this n thing. Um, and what that is, is it's the size of the cube. So this is, so, and it's three right now, but if I make it two, it's a two by two. Oh, it's so cute. <laughs> uh, um, and then I can go the other way, make it a four by four. It's a big cube. But the problem is, if I do the regular move notation, it only turns the outer layers. It doesn't actually turn the inner layers. So yeah, that's a bit of a problem. Because I, because I, so I need to implement wide turns for cubes which are bigger than a three by three because those are required there. Um, okay, let me explain. So, so in regular move notation, if you have a letter like R, that means to turn the right face clockwise. So, in this case, that means to turn. this face here, clockwise. If you wanted to make it counterclockwise, then that's R prime. Um, so that's the same face, but it turns counterclockwise in the other direction. Now what this means... Now, the way I implemented this, because I can't just do, if it's if I type R then prime, then it's going to turn counterclockwise because I, I already typed R, so it's going to go clockwise. <laughs> um, so the way I decided to do this is instead of doing R prime, I do, I do shift R. If I do R, then it goes clockwise, but if I do shift R, then it goes counterclockwise. I'm gonna be calling that R prime, it's still. Now on a four by four, R means to do the outer turn, so like only this face. 
if I want to turn both of these faces, So if I want to turn both of these, then that's going to be R W for wide. Now I now I can't just do the same thing that I did with prime, where I just do shift that, because shift that is already going in the opposite direction. It's not a wide move. I could do something with left and right shift, but no. I could also use the other control keys, but those, but like for example, option on a Mac at least will make it do a different, will make it do a different letter or even a different symbol. Um, and command and control are used for doing, well, command for the app, for the app that you're currently in. So I don't really know a solution to this. I don't really know how I'm gonna implement wide moves for um, big cubes because that's... <laughs> because that is... Um, because all of the keys that I can use are already reserved, so... <laughs> so yeah, that's a bit of a problem. So I can crank up the size, but I can't make it act like that size, if that makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, that's a problem. So I'm gonna need to find a way to fix that. Um, yeah. And okay, three by three is usable. Yeah, it is usable. I think I'm. There are there are a few more things for the three by three though. Like for example, I still have to make it so that you can sort of turn with the mouse and. Like, there's no, and also there's no turning animation yet, so yeah. Uh, uh, I'm kind of tired of saying, hope you guys enjoyed the video, and bye there. Well, anyway, bye there. <laughs> that, that's my ending, you know? I can't come up with anything better. <laughs>